a straightforward approach to managing your money. The Rob Black Show. People like one-line summaries. So let's start with a one-line summary. Positive bias before the Fed meeting today. Tells you that the market's on the nervous side, anxious. Looking to the Fed to calm it down. That's the one-line summary to start. Now let's get into some of the details, shall we? Look at the calendar, and you can see the year is winding down quickly. September 22, before you know it, it's going to be Thanksgiving. Then you're going to bat an eye, it's going to be Christmas, and it's going to be a new year. And we're going to start this whole game all over again. It's been a good year. It's been a very, very good year. Taking a look at some of the stories from yesterday and today and see how they blend together to tell us where we may be going. Stocks ended up mostly level yesterday. Remember how we started the day off positive, then we went negative, and then we kind of went positive? Well, when all shook out, wasn't that bad of a day. Showing that there's an impending nervousness about Evergrande collapsing. Not yet totally infecting the market with mm, financial crisis fears. Uber shares went into a surge pricing mode after the company hiked its outlook and said it could be profitable on an adjusted EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization, which is basically just a made up way of saying we're still losing a lot of money. But if we didn't have to do all those things, we would have made some money. I hate that. I hate that way of reporting. It does not feel right. But it's okay. White House is dealing with Congress, and Congress is dealing with party lines, and party lines are saying, do we fund the government or not fund the government for the next couple of months? Do we suspend the debt ceiling? Do we not? GOP is playing hardball with the Democrats' attempt to push through an aggressive budget that favors their agenda. The music industry's rebirth reached a crescendo yesterday when Universal Music, the world's biggest music company, went public in Amsterdam. Its first day of trading was pristine. You're talking about Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, leaping nearly 40% to give the company a market value of $55 billion. The music industry left for dead in the 2000s as we stopped buying CDs. And we started downloading files from LimeWire and any sort of peer-to-peer connection that we can get our hands on to our iPods. Music sales fell 56%. But then the music industry turtled up and went into preservation mode and streaming mode and tried to embrace digital. Universal started shifting their strategies to earn royalties off streaming services and social media platforms. In 2013, Universal forged a deal with Apple to get its artist onto Apple Music two years before the service debuted. In 2017, it worked out favorable icing terms with Spotify. In 2017, it also became the first major music company to strike a deal with Facebook, Instagram. And ultimately, inside of Facebook, Things like Messenger and Oculus. TikTok, which every now and then I'm in my vehicle with my son and he starts singing along to the song on the radio. I'm like, where did you hear this? He goes, TikTok. I guess it's where kids are learning all their music now. Global streaming services rose 20% in 2020. Not too shabby. Now there's always going to be what they have in the professional sports, this weird thing between talent and management, labor disputes. So every couple of years, you're going to see talent say, we want a bigger piece of the streaming pie. And every couple of years, you're going to see management say, no, no, we want a bigger piece of the pie. So that's kind of out there and looming. But interesting that the death of music, not so dead after all. The Apple Watch Series 7 is coming later this fall. When we saw the update, 
we were like, uh, not that impressive. But what was weird about it was um, from Apple, a lot of their products are going to be stuttered this year. In large part due to the supply chain disruption in semiconductors. And due to the supply chain disruptions due to ports getting backed up. Big moves in tech. Tech companies are seeing major executive shakeups right now. <laughs> Waze's chief marketing officer left Google owned navigation app. Cisco has lost a big part of their security business CEO. Um, we've seen a pretty big disruption in labor in 2020, 2021. The 2020-2021 angle is something along the lines of, let's find better jobs. Let's not go back to that crappy way of doing business where we go into the office. We did it before. We were kind of stuck in a rut, but COVID kind of shook things up and got us out of our rut. A lot of people are questioning what they're going to be doing for a living. Google's buying a New York City office building for $2.1 billion, basically doubling down on its return to the office, committing to a future where at least some people work in person. Amazon wants everyone to know it's totally cool with smoking pot right now. <laughs> hey man, it's cool. Hey man, it's cool. You don't have to hide that joint from me. I'll take a puff. It's not quite what Amazon's saying. With the companies lobbying the government of the United States to federally legalize cannabis, shortly after it announced it'll no longer pre-screen employees for cannabis use, Partly because it's running out of workers to hire. I know when you saw Amazon saying to the government, we're going to lobby for legalizing marijuana. You're like, I bet they want to deliver ice cream and pizza at two in the morning. That's what I thought too. But it's basically tied towards workers. Um, One analyst, not analyst, excuse me, what is he? He is a fund manager who returned over 4,000% in the first quarter of 2020. This is the market's in uncharted territory. Mark Spitznagel believes we are in a boom-bust cycle, so investors need a risk mitigation strategy. Do you have a risk mitigation strategy? Huh. In the world of tech, Verily is looking to separate itself from Google. Verily is Alphabet's... Uh, Alphabet is the mother company of Google and Verily is one of the life sciences units. It's trying to untangle itself from Google's technology and become more independent. So Google changed their name to Alphabet. Alphabet said, let's, let's categorize some of our moonshots so that Google looks like the search company and Verily looks like the life sciences company so that when investors want to look at us, they could figure us out. That's the simple way of saying it. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Netflix may have found their golden ticket, a big acquisition for a company that's done less than 10 acquisitions. They're buying the Ronald Dahl catalog, which includes Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You can find me online, Rob Black Show. That's Rob Black Show. If you need an advisor, a financial planner, an appointment to go over your portfolio, contact me through robblackshow.com. Find us at robblackshow.com, robblackshow.com. A personal financial plan with custom investment advice. That's why Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP services were built with you in mind. How can they help you? Find out at robblackshow.com, robblackshow.com. So there's two or three really big stories out there today. Disney's in the news as their stock is a little concerning on Disney+. Plus. Existing home sales fell in the month of August as it looks like some buyers are finally saying, I don't know if I can afford that. And this one I'm coming back to, I'm circling back around on because I got an email from a listener. You can drop me an email, rob at robblackshow.com. It's rob at robblackshow.com. And it was on a company I, I knew a little bit about, but not enough. A company called QuantumScape. It jumped 10% yesterday. It makes lithium ion batteries. Now, I should have you at that. The Jerry Maguire movie. You had me at hello. 
okay, that's a bit cheesy. But I should have you and your attention when I say it's a lithium ion battery technology play. <clears throat> QuantumScape, partially marked, uh, backed by Bill Gates. That's interesting. Now I've got you, I've got you twice on it, right? Company said it signed an agreement to work with a top 10 by global revenues automaker. Volkswagen is already a top partner and investor in QuantumScape. The second automobile maker was not identified, but it's the top 10. The new automaker is going to evaluate Quantum's lithium anode, solid state EV batteries. Solid state refers to the fact that Quantum Escapes technology has no liquid electrolyte transporting electric charge in the battery cell. Solid state batteries promise better safety range, cost, charge times for the EV industry. They are a panacea, but no one has made an automotive grade solid state battery yet. That's another selling point. They're trying to do something that no one else has been able to pull off. Now, you can kind of see where this is all adding up. They're trying to basically thump Tesla at Tesla's game. But have you figured out that they're not making revenue yet? Quantum is trying to get their automotive grade battery ready by 2025. So they're going to trade on news right now. They're technically worth about $10 billion. There's a couple other battery technology companies that I've seen come public. Some of them don't have the best names. Listen to this one. The Decarbonization Plus Acquisition 3. Okay, okay, that's a good name for a company. Not. <clears throat> that company's valued at about $2 billion. There's Ivanhoe Capital Acquisitions which they're going after battery companies, technologies, and patents. They're valued at about $3.3 billion. And it's really tough to value companies that don't have revenue. But they have this big opportunity with global automotive suppliers. So QuantumScape in the news. For the record, they're down 70% from their all-time high, down 13% in the last three months. But yesterday, they had a big day on announcing another partner. I would kind of refer to this as a hyper-growth company. You don't have to have earnings as long as you've got proof of concept and you're starting to ramp some revenues. They're even before the ramping of revenues. Big story right now, existing home sales cooled down in the final month of summer, fell 2%, 5.88 million units. July sales were revised slightly upward to 6 million units. The results exceeded analyst expectations of a 1.7% decline. Housing sector is settling down, so says Lawrence Young, chief economist at NAR, the National Association of Realtors. He did say, don't forget, there was a surge in activity last year when COVID-19 lockdowns lifted, and that was a bit of an anomaly, and we feel like maybe that's behind us now. Listen to this, though. Year-to-date home sales are up 16% from the same period a year ago and up 12% from the same period in 2019. Sales activity is still above pre-pandemic levels, telling you that there is a shifting in America. <clears throat> this doesn't make a lot of sense what I'm about to say out loud, but it, it feels like home sales are trying to return to some sort of normal equilibrium. But the high highs will become lower highs, and the lowest of lows will become tighter lows. <clears throat> Total housing inventory or homes for sale down 1.5% from July supply and down 13.4% from a year ago. Tight inventory, tight inventory, but sales activity a little bit on the dry side. First time home buyers represented just 29% of sales in the month, the lowest level since January 2019. It is still a very, very major challenge for first time home buyers to secure a home. Disney stock fell on the news that CEO warned, warning, Will Robinson, warning of slower growth for Disney+. Plus. They're going to reinstate their dividend. 
but not anytime soon, distant future. That sucks. Let me explain that real quick, why it sucks. I own shares of Disney. There's a lot of widows and orphans and such people who own shares of Disney. And the nice thing about Disney is you get paid for owning it. You get a dividend. Every 90 days, the dividend man cometh. And you're like stoked. You're like, okay, if I own 100 shares and it's going to pay me 2%, I'm going to get $2 this year. So every 90 days, you're like, I'm going to get 50 cents, and 50 more cents. And then if you own thousands of shares, you can see how it starts to add up. And when a company like Disney suspends their dividend because COVID shuts down their parks worldwide, they have to like save some cash. <clears throat> They're used to cash coming in. And when they build the Star Wars Cantina and the future worlds that they continue to build at their theme parks, that costs money and they borrow money to, to, to do the construction and make it look pretty and make sure their facilities are good and healthy and ready to go for park visitors. When there's no park visitors, they've still borrowed that money and built these designs, attractions. So they had to stop their dividend for a bit. And they said, we're going to hold off on reinstating that just a little bit longer. So Disney Plus is really trying to focus on storytelling. They really don't want to be like a Netflix where they're just churning out a lot. They want to turn out a lot that has critical reviews for its writing. CEO Bob Jibik said this means increased investment in content for streaming and other distribution channels. It means expanding to new markets, which cost money, and upgrading the experience in Disney's theme parks across the globe. Chapek warned that the Delta variant-fueled wave of COVID-19 is impacting movie and television production and will delay releases in the coming months. So some pretty negative numbers there, some pretty negative things to chew on. Pandemic-related suspension of the Indian Premier League cricket season last spring also means less sports content on Disney streaming services in India. Who knew that the Cricket League in India would hurt Disney stock? <clears throat> That's news to me. Disney's theme park and cruise revenues fell to almost zero during the worst months of the COVID-19. They're trying to ramp that back up, but Delta variant, Mu variant, all the variants are kind of saying, yeah, not so soon. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is the Rob Black Show. So there's two or three really big stories out there today. Disney's in the news as their stock is a little concerning on Disney+. Plus. Existing home sales fell in the month of August as it looks like some buyers are finally saying, I don't know if I can afford that. And this one I'm coming back to, I'm circling back around on because I got an email from a listener. You can drop me an email, rob at robblackshow.com. It's rob at robblackshow.com. And it was on a company I, I knew a little bit about, but not enough. A company called QuantumScape. It jumped 10% yesterday. It makes lithium ion batteries. Now, I should have you at that. The Jerry Maguire movie. You had me at hello. Okay, that's a bit cheesy. But I should have you and your attention when I say it's a lithium ion battery technology play. <clears throat> QuantumScape, partially marked, uh, backed by Bill Gates. That's interesting. Now I've got you. I've got you twice on it, right? The company said it signed an agreement to work with a top ten by Global Revenues automaker. Volkswagen is already a top partner and investor in QuantumScape. The second automobile maker was not identified, but it's a top ten. The new automaker is going to evaluate Quantum's lithium anode, solid state EV batteries. Solid state refers to the fact that quantum escapes technology has no liquid electrolyte transporting electric charge in the battery cell. Solid state batteries promise better safety range cost charge times for the EV industry. They are a panacea, but no one has made an automotive grade solid state battery yet. That's another selling point. They're trying to do something that no one else has been able to pull off. Now, you can kind of see where this is all adding up. They're trying to basically thump Tesla at Tesla's game. 
but have you figured out that they're not making revenue yet? Quantum is trying to get their automotive grade battery ready by 2025. So they're going to trade on news right now. They're technically worth about $10 billion. There's a couple other battery technology companies I've seen come public. Some of them don't have the best names. Listen to this one. The Decarbonization Plus Acquisition 3. Okay, okay, that's a good name for a company. Not. <clears throat> that company's valued about $2 billion. There's Ivanhoe Capital Acquisitions, which they're going after battery companies, technologies, and patents. They're valued at about $3.3 billion. And it's really tough to value companies that don't have revenue. But they have this big opportunity with global automotive suppliers. So QuantumScape in the news. For the record, they're down 70% from their all-time high, down 13% in the last three months. But yesterday, they had a big day on announcing another partner. I would kind of refer to this as a hyper-growth company. You don't have to have earnings as long as you've got proof of concept and you're starting to ramp some revenues. They're even before the ramping of revenues. Big story right now, existing home sales cooled down in the final month of summer, fell 2%, 5.88 million units. July sales were revised slightly upward to 6 million units. The results exceeded analyst expectations of a 1.7% decline. Housing sector is settling down, so says Lawrence Young, chief economist at NAR, the National Association of Realtors. He did say, don't forget, there was a surge in activity last year when COVID-19 lockdowns lifted, and that was a bit of an anomaly, and we feel like maybe that's behind us now. Listen to this, though. Year-to-date home sales are up 16% from the same period a year ago and up 12% from the same period in 2019. Sales activity is still above pre-pandemic levels, telling you that there is a shifting in America. <clears throat> this doesn't make a lot of sense, what I'm about to say out loud, but it, it feels like home sales are trying to return to some sort of normal equilibrium. But the high highs will become lower highs, and the lowest of lows will become tighter lows. <clears throat> Total housing inventory or homes for sale down 1.5% from supply, uh, July supply and down 13.4% from a year ago. Tight inventory, tight inventory, but sales activity a little bit on the dry side. First time home buyers represented just 29% of sales in the month, the lowest level since January 2019. It is still a very, very major challenge for first time home buyers to secure a home. Disney stock fell on the news that the CEO warned, warning, Will Robinson, warning of slower growth for Disney+. Plus. They're going to reinstate their dividend, <clears throat> but not anytime soon, distant future. That sucks. Let me explain that real quick, why it sucks. I own shares of Disney. There's a lot of widows and orphans and such people who own shares of Disney. And the nice thing about Disney is you get paid for owning it. You get a dividend. Every 90 days, the dividend man cometh. And you're like stoked. You're like, okay, if I own 100 shares and it's going to pay me 2%, I'm going to get $2 this year. So every 90 days, you're like, I'm going to get 50 cents, and 50 more cents. And then if you own thousands of shares, you can see how it starts to add up. And when a company like Disney suspends their dividend because COVID shuts down their parks worldwide, they have to like save some cash. <clears throat> They're used to cash coming in. And when they build the Star Wars Cantina and the future worlds that they continue to build at their theme parks, that costs money and they borrow money to, to, to do the construction and make it look pretty and make sure their facilities are good and healthy and ready to go for park visitors. When there's no park visitors, they've still borrowed that money and built these designs attractions so they had to stop their dividend for a bit and they said we're going to hold off on reinstating that just a little bit longer so disney plus is 
really trying to focus on storytelling. They really don't want to be like a Netflix where they're just churning out a lot. They want to turn out a lot that has critical reviews for its writing. CEO Bob Jibbick said this means increased investment in content for streaming and other distribution channels. It means expanding to new markets, which cost money, and upgrading the experience in Disney's theme parks across the globe. Chapek warned that the Delta variant-fueled wave of COVID-19 is impacting movie and television production and will delay releases in the coming months. So some pretty negative numbers there, some pretty negative things to chew on. Pandemic-related suspension of the Indian Premier League cricket season last spring also means less sports content on Disney streaming services in India. Who knew that the Cricket League in India would hurt Disney stock? <clears throat> That's news to me. Disney theme park and cruise revenues fell to almost zero during the worst months of the COVID-19. They're trying to ramp that back up, but Delta variant, Mu variant, all the variants are kind of saying, nah, not so soon. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Resources to help you manage your money. Visit robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Invest in what is really important. Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. Are you concerned with financial planning, tax planning, managing your investments, or just planning your retirement? Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP has your financial future in mind. Learn more by visiting robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. So, Disney is in the news, which means bad jokes coming your way. Which Disney princess would make the best judge on The Voice or America's Got Talent? Which Disney princess? Well, of course, Snow White, because she's the fairest of them all. Hmm. Why should you not give Elsa a balloon? Elsa from Disney. Why should you not give her a balloon? Because she'll let it go, let it go. How cold was it this weekend at Disney World? So cold, you say, that Donald Dunk was wearing pants. Ho, 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 ho! Donald Duck was wearing pants. Hmm. Hmm. Why did Goofy, Goofy, stare at the label on an orange juice bottle all day long? Why did he stare? Why did Goofy stare at the label? Because the carton said concentrate. Oh, oh, I could do this all day. Now back to your regular schedule program, Rob Black and your money. Disney is in the news today, and they're kind of warning of slower growth due to how the company went into the pandemic, got hyper growth going, and now it's coming out of the pandemic or the pandemic's hitting another stage and it's saying there's going to be some slower growth. Whoa, whoa. Get along there, little doggy. So Disney's got a new CEO, Bob Chapek, and he's trying to just put his own stamp on the company. Uh, over Eisner, um, it's a thing CEOs do. So one of the things that going into the pandemic that they had to do was like really focus on we're not going to have parks or movie theaters for a while. What do we do? And they said, let's go directly to the consumer. And they did. And they did it in a wonderful kind of way. They had to increase investment in content for streaming and distribution channels. They had to upgrade the experience in Disney's theme parks around the globe. They had to expand into new markets. But now they're saying the Delta variant fueled of COVID-19 has impacted the movie and TV production and will delay releases in the coming months. The Indian Premier League cricket season last spring means less sports content on Disney+. Plus, And that's big in India. India was going to be their next United States. They were going to brag and show the world how great they are because they got the country of India inside watching Disney+. Plus. They had expected for about 17 million additional Disney Plus subscribers. 
Now they think it's going to be low single digit million. Low single digit is low like two, three, four, five million versus 17 million. That is a miss. Just a little outside. I would say that's a lot outside, bud. Like that one went into the, the seats. Nowhere near the strike zone. Disney continues to see strong park attendance in the sp and spending at said parks. They've reinstituted indoor mask requirements and additional health and safety measures haven't been controversial. Reservations and bookings in the period are higher than they were in the prior quarter. So as we've come out of COVID uh, in 2021 in the spring and summer, it's building in numbers at the parks. The shutdown enabled Disney to re-engineer things and build the systems necessary to do, do exactly that. The backbone of the whole thing is a reservation system, which is magical. As Tim Cook would say, magical. Man, there's a couple acquisitions to, uh, Apple could have done in the last couple of years, like Disney and or like Netflix. That for all the credit we give Tim Cook, he might have missed some things there. Just my opinion. Disney uh, upgraded what's called Disney Genie, which is a smartphone application launching this fall that allows visitors to manage their daily itinerary at Disney parks, join virtual queues for rides and attractions, and purchase upgrades and extras. It is really insane how much a family of four trip to Disney costs. It is insane that we we accept this and we don't revolt. But it's also a big tourist attraction worldwide. So when the Biden administration says, hey, you can come to America if you're Eddie Murphy. Or you can come to America if you've been vaccinated. That's going to bring some tourists in for Disney. So that's a win there. But the streaming strategy is a long-term strategy. And the short term, it's not quite right. I didn't know Disney Plus was going to be counting on India for a couple million subscribers and the cricket league getting shut down due to COVID would be a thing that says, eh, well, maybe we don't need to subscribe because the cricket league, yeah, the cricket. I know you're saying, are you talking to Jiminy Cricket? You're not talking about that sport they play in India. It looks kind of like baseball, and I can't figure out the rules. But I think they can get 200 straight hits in a row and somehow become legends. There's some sports I just can't figure out, and I would need, like, a tutor. If anyone wants to help me and the Rob Black Foundation for being ignorant on sports, I know nothing about cricket, and I know nothing about rugby. And try as I, I, I might, I, I just don't care. Very American of me, no? I, I get I get the tea thing, but I don't get the cricket thing. So Disney's capital allocation is going to have to spend more on their content. It's a bit of a lose for uh, Wall Street. I'm Rob Black. You can always find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I work with EP Wealth. If you need an advisor, a certified financial planner to review your financial plan, contact me through Rob Black Show. Com. Honest, straightforward, and right to the point. The Rob Black Show.